The advent of 12.5, Sybase introduced the MDA tables, good for identifying what's going on within the server activity. This was enhanced with 15, which has a variety of other ways to do a variety of other things. And look at some of them. And we'll for those questions to come in in just about a minute. Just to remind you that September 15th will be our next, sorry, 15th will be our next uh, broadcasted webinar. <laughs> the topic will be remote performance management. Uh, I have a copy of the presentation questions on here, you can email me for a copy of that. That's daniel.goitine at mlogica.com. All right, we have a question coming in here. asks why we use the ST Sysmon with clear option. The SP Sysmon uses internal counters which enable you to identify the scene and ending point. So how much PU do I have now? How much CPU am I using later? Uh, to difference. Or how many locks have I collected at five o'clock? How many locks if I collect at uh, 5.15 and subtract them. Now, if we're using the clear option, which is the default, then when we're running, we set all the counters back to zero. What the, what you want to do is say, OK, check the counters now, check the counters in five minutes, check the counters in 10 minutes, and compare those numbers to one another. A lot of the tools that, uh, that folks use to collect this information individual values from the registers rather than using the, the clear option with uh, the DBCC uh, uh, 8399, which is what's actually going on uh, behind the scenes internally with the, the clear and the collect. Actually, that's not entirely correct. So let, let, me, let me give you a, an entirely correct answer. The reason we use the no clear uh, is that there's which rely on the uncleared numbers to collect information for graphing and making predictive values over time. So, if you're only running this for yourself, uh, I'll rephrase that. If you're only running this for your server and nothing else is running the SP Sysmon, then it doesn't matter. If you have multiple people that might be running the SP Sysmon at the same time, or if you have a tool that's running in the background collecting the information, you want to make sure that you do not clear the registers, and so that's what the no clear is for. Great, you, Jeff. How try the new Sybase Control Central? Another easy answer. Yeah, quick. Another one asks, where do you get the article on interpreting SP Sysmon output? Quill search didn't find it right off. Uh, that is actually part of the Cybooks. If you go to the uh, uh, if you go to uh, Cybooks, uh, cybooks.cybase.com and go to ASC15, uh, it's there. Hey, Mike, do you happen to know if I'm, I'm free to distribute that? Uh, if I download it for my own use, is that something I'm, I can distribute without a copyright violation? Uh, Mike. I don't know. I, I'd, I'd, offer, I'd offer to email it to you, but I don't know if that violates somebody's copyright. So go to cybooks.cybase.com and uh, look uh, look at their uh, 
their the generic collections, and, and it, it's in the same place you'd find like the systems admin guide and the Direct uh, SQL users guide. Okay. You can email Jeff or, or me. Uh, it doesn't show him, but if you're looking for the name of tools for certain things, you can feel email Jeff, or if you can't reach him, email me as well. That will on to him. I also ask, can we use the trace flags 302 and 310? SQL text execution. Uh, the 302 and 310 will give you information uh, on a particular query still. With 10, there are other set show plan options uh, available. And there's, oh gosh, there are quite a few of them available for 15. So 302 and 310 are not really deprecated, but there are better ways of getting that information now. Uh, but that doesn't give you an easy way of getting the information for somebody else's section or something else that's running. Uh, now, I still do use the 302, 310, even though it's a bit deprecated, simply because I'm used to looking at the output. I've been doing that for 50, 20 years now. Uh, but if, if it's something that you're not accustomed to looking at, uh, look at the new set show plan options. Okay, thank you. Something about the T-Sysmon will slow down even more the server that's already in trouble. Uh, good question. I haven't... It's hard to measure things like that because if you're running at, oh, 98% of capacity and you're trying to figure out what's wrong, uh, will the effect of measuring that cause you more problems? Well, really it would, uh, but will it do it in a full 2% of your resources. I would expect to because this information is simply pulling, uh, or, or rather this command is simply pulling things from registers. Flip side is if you don't do it, how are you going to figure out where your problems are? At the point, you kind of bite the bullet and say, let's do some analysis here. So I'd, I'm giving you a happy answer to that one. In question, what periods do you recommend for running STSYSMA? We have 15 minute intervals every half hour. Is that reasonable? Reasonable. Um, I, I have seen a, a variety of ways of doing this. The only problem that you run into with the SP SysMons is that you're taking snapshots. So if your problem is occurring in the 15 minute snapshot you're taking it, then that's fine. You're picking it up. If, you're, if your utilization is consistent, that's fine. Uh, you know, 15 every half an hour, 5 minutes every 10, 5 minutes every 15. It's not so much a right or wrong as does it work for you. Um, so, and I, I, sound, I feel like I'm waffling here a little bit. It's one of the other reasons I like using a tool, because a tool will pick it up uh, on a continuous basis as opposed to doing the individual checkpoints. So you have uh, you know, an every minute snapshot as opposed to a snapshots with holes in it. Personal questions. Okay. Uh, to ask Jeff, how do we find a crayon for the longest time during a particular time interval? I mean, which MDA tables can be defined out? Keep in mind that the query that runs the longest is not necessarily the query that is giving you the most problem. Let me answer the question that you asked, and then let me uh, answer a slightly different question, which is the one that you're intending to ask, or uh, maybe the one that I have more fun answering. If you look back at this process SQL text and the, uh, this SQL text, it's part information you get out uh, from the month's statement is start time and end time. So if you think about it, you want to, if, if all you care about is run longest. Well, you subtract the end time, or the start time from the end time, and whatever has got the biggest range is going to get you your answer. The, that may not be your biggest problem. Uh, let me be specific. I was a shop oh, a while ago, and uh, 
I'm coming back to this tool because I'm using it a lot to, to answer this particular question. And I, I was telling him, you know, sometimes queries that are causing you the problems aren't the ones that are causing you the problems. Because if, for example, you've got a query that's running at times a second, and it takes, say, 1.2 seconds to run, well, nobody's going to call and complain if something takes 1.2 seconds. But if that's taking up 40% of your resources, then tuning that 1.2 second uh, query down to say 20 milliseconds is going to give you 40% of your box back. And the guy laughed at me and he said, we don't have that problem here. Well, guess what? Uh, uh, if it's not the famous last words, nothing is. Uh, we found that there was uh, a query that was running in a little over a second. It's closer to a second and a half and it's taking up 43% of the resources on the box. And all we 